In this video, I'll go over the settings to PSX's hacked firmware for the Flysky GT3B C as well as the Turnigy GTX3, which I have right here. At the time of this video, the latest version is 061, as you can see from the screen. I won't go into details on how to flash the firmware since there's a, quite a few uh, good ones on YouTube already. Just search for GT3B hack and you should see the top three ones right away. Basically, it involves soldering three wires to the transmitter's circuit board and then flashing it with a um, STM8 programming board. I think the hacked firmware is a must-have because it adds a ton of new features and options as well as fixing some of the initial issues with the uh, stock firmware. A few of the features are more channels, up to eight channels, customizable buttons, sub trims, up to 63 model memory slots, and the ability to copy models to other slots as well. Because of the limitation of the LCD display, it can be a bit confusing at first to configure the new hidden options, but eventually you get used to it. I think PSX did a good job in using the existing display characters and symbols to give feedback on which menu you're in. The interface is broken down into a few sections. Basically you have the main menu, which shows you the model name and the voltage and a couple of timers. The next section is the menu selection screen which gives you access to the eight items as well as the new hidden submenus. There's also a calibration screen for calibrating your channels. Also, there's a test area where you can test the display as well as uh, some of the, the buttons that are on the, the transmitter itself. So to navigate around the various screens and menus, you have this dial which you can turn or press down on. and to select the item, you just hit the enter button really quickly. Turning it will select different items. And to get out of the menu, usually pressing the enter button for a second will take you out of the menu. The long press will also take you into the new hidden submenus. And the back button will take you to the main menu where you saw your models and uh, voltage. So after flashing your firmware, you should calibrate your controls and there is actually a menu for that. So when you're in the main menu where the where it shows you the model and then the voltage, you can turn your steering wheel to the right, hold it there and then press the enter button for a second. And then you'll bring you to the calibration screen. This is where you can calibrate your steering and throttle. You know you're in this menu because you see the six blinking menu items. So the first thing you're going to calibrate is your steering. It says right here channel 1. And to do this, uh, turn your steering wheel all the way to the left and then press the enter button. So you'll notice that one of the menu items got deselected. The next thing we're going to do is set the center of your steering wheel. So we're just going to leave leave the steering wheel alone and just press enter. And a, another menu item disappeared. And the next one we're going to set is the full right position. So you turn your steering wheel to the right and then hit enter. And you've just completed the the calibration of the steering. Now you notice there's only three blinking uh, menu items. So turn your channel to channel two, and this is where we're going to set the throttle calibration. So pull your trigger, full throttle, and then hit enter, and then leave the throttle uh, the throttle trigger alone in the center, and then hit enter. And then put your throttle in the braking position, full braking position, and press enter. And now you're done uh, calibrating your steering and as well as your throttle. You can also calibrate things like your, your channel 3 as well. Channel 4 here is actually your battery. So this is where you can set the maximum voltage of your battery. And to exit out of the calibration screen, you just hold down the enter button. And it will bring you back to the main menu with the model and voltage screen. When you first turn on your GT3B, you'll be presented with the main menu. And this is where you, you see your model memory, uh, the model that you selected, your voltage, as well as these two options here. Because of the limitation of the LCD screen, uh, instead of having words for timer, they're actually represented by these arrows. So left forward is the first timer, and left uh, right back is the second timer. And they both basically have the same option. And to get into this, to get into the timer options, you hit the enter button. The first option is H, which lets you set whether you want to start the timer when throttle is applied. 
The next option is A, which is to set the alarm when a certain value is reached. It will beep depending on the type of uh, timer you use, either in laps or minutes. The last option is P, which is the timer type. You can choose between lap timer or lap counter and a couple of other options. So in here you have the up timer, down timer, lap counter, and lap timer, and then here's the lap counter. Like I mentioned before, timer two is represented by the right back arrow. It's, it's the same thing as timer one. You just have two of them, timer one and timer two. The next menu is the global setup menu. This is where you can see the firmware version and set other global options. So to get into that menu, you just hold down, while you're in the main menu, where it shows you the model and the, the voltage, if you hold down the enter button for a second, you'll get into this menu here and you'll see the model and name item flashing. This will let you know when you're in the global menu. F stands for firmware and at the time of this video the latest firmware is 061. And the next option is L which stands for LED backlight. This option lets you choose when the LED backlight turns off. I have mine set at, at max which means it's on all the time but you can have it turn off in like 30 seconds of inactivity or 15 up to 10 minutes or leaving it on indefinitely. The next option is I which stands for inactivity alarm. It'll set it'll start to beep at a certain time if you leave it alone. So this is so you don't drain your battery. So just if you set it at five minutes per, let's say and, and you leave it alone for five minutes without touching it, it will start beeping to let you know to turn it off. It's just so you don't drain your battery. The next option is the low power or low voltage alarm. If you're using a lower voltage battery instead of the stock 8 AA's or a 3 cell LiPo, maybe like a 2 cell LiPo that runs at a lower voltage of like 7.4 volts, you can set the alert to trigger at a lower voltage. The next option is the default number of channels for your models and you can have up to 8. E stands for the maximum value for your endpoint. I usually set th this at 100 or 120. The A setting is for your analog settings for your dead zones for steering and throttle. The B option is for beeps. So the first one is K which is the key beeps. I have that turned on. And then the next one is V which stands for the trim value center reset beep. And I have that turned on as well. P is for the power on beep. So when you turn it on, it'll beep. And C, it's basically when you turn it on and your, your controls aren't centered, it'll also beep. D is the long press delay for your buttons. Usually this is set as a at one second or 1000 milliseconds. So to enter a sub menu or something like that, you hold down the button. And this is where you set how long you have to hold the button down for. H is for hardware features and EN I believe this is for like the GT3B which is reversing the uh, the encoder normal or reverse P3 is for your whether to set channel 3 as a potentiometer or not I say no PTS these next two options are for uh, basically PPM settings and usually don't touch these. And then R, R is for reset. This is where you get reset your global configurations as well as all your models. So G stands for global reset. If you change this to Y and then you hit enter, it will reset everything. Everything that you've set, all the models will be erased. So I'll say no on that. And M stands for model reset, where it will clear out all your memory slots for your models and not it won't clear out the global configurations. So we'll say no on that. And oh, this is the this is where you can lock all your buttons until you press the enter button for a second. So if I turn this on, enter. So it says lock now, so all your buttons are locked. You can't do anything. You can't turn or anything until you hit this button. Until you hit the enter button for a second. So that's all the, the options for the global menu. So to access your setup menu, 
from the main menu all you do is you hit the enter button and this is where you can set up your model as well as uh, access the new hidden features and menus of the hacked firmware. So the first option is model. This is where you select your various models. And with the hacked firmware you have up to 63 models. To select your model you just hit enter. So the first unlock feature of the firmware is the ability to copy model memories from one slot to another. If you wanted to like test some settings without messing up your current working model configuration, you could just copy it to another slot and then try things out. So to do this, all you have to do is select the model you want to copy. So go into the model selection screen and choose the model you want to copy, hit enter, and then go into the, the setup screen again, you'll see the model highlighted. And then you hold down the enter key for a second. And then both of them will start blinking, model and the number. And what you do is you turn the dial to where you want to copy it. So let's copy it in the slot 2. Uh, just hit enter. And now slot 2 will also have the, the same exact configurations of slot 1. The next option is naming your model. If you quick, If you press the enter button quickly, you can change the name of your model and long press enter to confirm. To access the hidden feature of this menu item, you can hold down the enter key when your when name is highlighted. And this will let you set the amount of channels for your model up to 8 channels. And you can also reset the model. So if you want to clear the settings for that memory slot, you can just select this option and choose yes, and then hit enter. And now, model slot one is cleared out. The third option is reversing. This lets you change the direction of your servos. If your car is turning right when you turn the wheel to the left, or if, or if your car goes in reverse when you apply throttle, then this is where you reverse your servos. And if you hit enter quickly, it will just bring you into the selection screen for, for the three channels. The reversing menu option also has a hidden, hidden menu, which is the key mapping or customizing of buttons. And if you hold the enter button while you have reversing selected, it will start to blink, telling you you're in the key mapping section. This is where you can change the what the buttons do. So one represents the steering trim buttons up here and 2 represents the throttle trim buttons, 3 represents the channel 3 trim buttons, D represents the, the DR button. Both of these channel 3 and DR button are located on your handle next to the trigger. C is for a channel 3 button, you can change that. And B is your back button, E is your end button and you're back to your steering trim buttons. So you can't program the bind button, but you can program pretty much every button other than that. Let's say you want to reassign your steering trims to do something else. What you do is you hit enter, and this is where you can select from the various options. So TR1 stands for trim one, trim two. Uh, you can use it to set your dual rate for steering, dual rate for forward, dual rate for reverse, exponential for steering, exponential for forward, exponential for reverse, channel 3, sub trim 1, sub trim 2, sub trim 3, steering speed for turning, steering speed for re return, and this is the channel speed, and four wheel steering as, would, as well as digital throttle mixing, multi position switches, or just not use them at all. So I'm going to leave it at the default. After you select what you want the button to do, you can select the behavior of the button. So NL stands for no long press, BER stands for auto repeat, momentary, RS means that if you hold the button for one second, it will reset the value to center or neutral, and then EN, if you long press it, it will set the value to maximum. So we're going to choose no long press. And then this is the increments of the buttons. 
And this is if you want to reverse this trim direction. We're going to say no, zero. And this is the opposite reset enabled or not. If your steering trim is set at say R10 and you press the left button, it will auto reset the steering to the center. The next option is the endpoint adjustments. This is where you can limit the server travel or the break and throttle of your speed controller. So if you press the button quickly, the enter button quickly, this is where you can set the endpoints for your, your uh, three channels. The trim setting is used to adjust the center position of your servos and throttles. So if you go in there, you can adjust the trim settings for your channel one and channel two. To access the sub trim menu, which this hacked firmware has, when you have the trim option selected, hold down the enter key for a second. And this is where you can adjust the sub trims to make a minor adjustments to your servo. DR or dual rate lets you press a button or switch to limit the maximum steering and throttle range. By default, DR is 100%. You know, I often use this to limit how fast the car will go because especially when I give it to someone who doesn't really play with RC cars, it might be a little too quick. So I use DR. I dial down the DR for the throttle to like 20% and give it to them. This way they can control it easier. By default, the DR switch only adjusts channel ones rate, but uh, with this hacked firmware, I assigned the DR button to adjust the channel two dual rate, which is pretty handy in quickly adjusting the throttle range. EXP or exponential is where you set how linear your controls are. By default, your controls are linear. So if you turn your steering wheel 10%, your car will turn 10%. If you turn the steering wheel 20%, it will turn 20%. So it's linear. So by adjusting exponential, you can make your controls less directly proportional. To do that, you just press enter quickly and you'll be able to set the exponential for your both your channels. There's also a hidden menu item for this. And to access that, all you do is you press the enter button for a second. And this is where you get into accessing direct values for your, your channels three to eight. And to exit out of it, you press the enter button for a second and you get back to the, the setup menu. The last option is EBS. And like a real car, it's used to pulsate the brakes so it doesn't lock up. This really only applies to like nitro cars where there's a, a disc brake that it actually actuates with a servo. So for electric cars, it really doesn't apply. The very last screen that this hacked firmware provides is the test screen. And to access it, you, you turn the steering wheel to the left and then hold down the enter key. In this section, you could test the various keys like your dial, your enter buttons, and all the buttons on your your handle and to get out of this menu you press the enter button for a second and you're back to the main menu so that's it for the configuration of the transmitter with the hacked firmware by PSX it unlocks a lot of features that you'll need and you'll probably unlock a lot of features that you won't need but at least it's there the ability to customize buttons more model memory more channels it's really hard not to flash this uh, transmitter, especially when it's so affordable and it adds so much more value to it. I hope you found this, this video useful. And if it did, like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.